Is why you always go in that place? Because it never really happened here. That's right. So now I got to come back home and do the same that I've been doing out there. And that's being an advocate. I call myself an advocate because I come out. I don't have a, a shirt or a certificate. I don't need all that good stuff. I don't need nothing to say what I do. I don't need to boast and brag about it because it makes me feel good in the end of the day. I don't have to come up here and just to be saying, well, okay, I did something. Oh, well, it's not a medal for me. It's not. You know what I'm saying? I'm just getting tired of it because, like I said, I got three boys. Soon to be a grandmother. <laughs> Sorry, son. You know, I know I look, I know I look good for the age, but, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, he's back there recording. Um, but yeah, soon to be a grandmother, and I don't want nobody coming into my home kicking in my door. Or I don't want nobody coming into your home kicking in your door. Because like I said, when it affects you, it affects me, it affects them, it affects everybody. And I mean, that's, that's all I got to say today. Thank y'all for your time. All right, Ms. Andre. Appreciate those words. And I definitely send, you know, I'll be sending you a, a Facebook request and a friend request. <laughs> um, also, too, you know, when you speak about uh, domestic violence, just keep in mind it's not one-dimensional. When it comes to domestic violence, it's just not somebody putting their hands on somebody else. Verbal abuse, too, because if you think about it, you know, if you're verbally abusive to somebody and they decide they don't have no self-worth and kill themselves, it's almost just the same as pulling the trigger. So keep it in mind that definitely domestic violence runs way deeper than just the physical part. Uh, also, when we're talking about folks not being afraid to go out there and tell somebody if you see something, a lot of times we looked at that, especially on a street level, as, a, a, as they call it, a snitch, okay? And that's almost a code to the street now for the young people, because sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm speaking to the wrong crowd now, because I like to, as I look out upon you folks, that y'all are the get it folks, so to speak. And I, I feel that the generation before me, which would be my parents and stuff, and my parents are 75 now, that was almost the last of the get it generation. They got it, they knew the family values, how to go out there and work and raise children and stuff like that. And we've kind of lost our way somewhat. So we need to kind of bring it back home. And one of the main things was snitching. When you think about that, that word in the street is regardless of anything, I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't seen nothing, I heard nothing. And coming from the streets of New York, that's the way I actually kind of feel up too. And at the same time, when you take that mindset again, are you gonna really have that mindset if it's your son, your daughter, your family member? I'm quite sure you would want to seem like a canary if you saw somebody that harmed you. So, I, I, you know, it's hard for me to distinguish and understand the disconnect we have sometimes where Okay, ain't my family, I'm all right. But as soon as your family, now you're mad at the next person because they won't say nothing and they know. And the bottom line at the end of the day is somebody is walking free who just took a human life. And I'm not gonna go in that direction because there's some young men out there right now that took a young woman's life in Monk's Corner, correct? Exactly. That's still walking out there. I don't even see how it is on their mindset and their conscience that they could actually eat sleep and just go about their business knowing you took a human life. It just, the, the value of life is just, it, it just continues to boggle my mind. And here to speak on somewhat about the snitch, snitching type of way we look at things when we're out in the street because it may jeopardize our street credibility or something is our own Papa Smurf. He's gonna come up here and speak about that just for a few minutes. Hey, how y'all doing today? I'm honored to be here. I, very, I really am. But I want to start off by saying this. I don't know nobody in this room who's been to heaven. He came back and told me there is one. But I'm gonna make preparation for heaven and get there and find out whether there is or not. And not be ready for heaven and get there and find out there is one. That's me. Now, this is a distinguished panel up here. I'm the young one of the panel. And you see the subject they gave me to talk about. It wasn't because they said we need someone to speak. They gave me this panel to talk about this because this is what I lived for so long. I lived in that life. 
I was a part of that life. All right now. I know you hit all over me, the, the distinguished senator. Uh, oh, he loves that. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, the senator called me, and I'm gonna call him senator. Okay. Called me Papa Smurf, and it's the reason why I asked him to do that. Because behind that name is a history. Y'all might not know it, but y'all might have heard of it. I was involved in one of the biggest drug deals here in Charleston, South Carolina. I got arrested with Henry, Henry Judy Bennett in UG, South Carolina. What happened to me during that process was I couldn't tell. I might have lost my life. But a distinguished gentleman who's not here no more that the police force might know about, named Mickey Watley. He was a uh, lieutenant for Slay. And at that time, the FBI and Slay came and got me. They wanted to pull me out the cell and talk to me. And I said, I'm not coming out there to talk to y'all. You know, everybody see me talking to y'all, they don't think I'm telling. <laughs> no, I ain't talking to y'all. And the weirdest thing about it was, that ain't why they pulled me out the cell. They pulled me out the cell because Mickey told me, I think I can help you. I said, well, how can you help me, Mickey? Only thing you want me to do for you is tell them somebody. No, you can't help me. But as a result of Mickey Watley, who ended up working with SLED. He was in North Charleston, I think he was at County 2, Chief or whatever, I don't know his, what he had, his title. The man saved my life. Literally saved my life. All right, now. What he did for me was he gave me a mirror to look in. He didn't give me a story about, well, if you do this, you're gonna end up in jail. If you do that, you're gonna end up in jail. He gave me a mirror and said, look at yourself. And that's what I did. I looked at myself. Now, I knew I couldn't just get away with what I did. I knew I had to go to prison, and I went. And I went for a good little time. But through prison, I studied. I started to read books. And one of the biggest things I found out in them books, and I hope I don't offend nobody, because I'm from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. I ain't over this side here. <laughs> so I ain't gonna start no trouble, because it's a long way to get back to Mount Pleasant. <laughs> but let me tell you, I found out one of the biggest lies that started my transformation. And that was when they told me the white man was the devil. I said, oh my God. Oh my God. All these years I went believing that. That, oh, this white man is holding me down. Oh, this white man, this, oh, this white man. And I'm a history buff. I study history a lot. I know it down pat. There's nothing you can bring up in history that I don't know about. Because I spent. 73 months studying it in prison, over five years studying history. But when I start to realize that these Caucasian people, is that a better way to say it? <laughs> no, my light-skinned brothers, I'll say that. My light-skinned brothers was not my enemy. I said, well, what else have y'all been lying to me about? I said, if these guys, if Mickey Watley can come to jail simply because he sees something in me, it's a shame he's dead now. Because I think he would have been honored to see me stand up here now and talk. But to see something in me enough to say, you somebody. And I'm not going to preach you here as a mirror. Just look at it. That's what I did. So if they could lie to me about that, they're lying to me about a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> now normally I bring my transcripts. It's a big transcript. Everything that was said in court. And if I had brought it, but I'm going to tell you, most of them know it. I was told on. I was told on, and I was the low man on the totem pole. They told on me, they tried to push everything on me. But I manned up to it and I stood and I said, here I go again being proved that this whole thing I've been taught, told all my life is a lie. There's no honor among thieves. There's no honor. The, the boat has sunk. The shark is eating him. Why should I go back and try to save him? I'm swimming for myself. That's right. So they put me up. And they said, Smurf did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I came here today. I came here to talk to not the older people, but I'm going to say something to y'all too, but to the younger brothers that constantly hear this word snitch. Y'all hear it. Ah, oh, don't snitch. Don't snitch. You know who started that? We did. <laughs> we thought that was a way to intimidate y'all, because who could best tell me about the drugs I was cooking than the person who was sitting there cooking it with me? The police wasn't there. They wasn't there when I was doing it. They don't know what happened, but they do. So now I gotta make sure, I'm just using that again. Now I gotta make sure she don't tell. <laughs> if you tell, you're snitching. If you tell, you're snitching. So I went on and on and on. 
So I start to realize that got out of control. You know, it really got out of control. Because any man who commits a crime, listen to me now, an act that is wrong, it goes against the dignity, I would normally say state, but I'm gonna say war and law, that goes against the dignity of war and law, needs not walk the street. Period. If he can kill somebody, he shouldn't be left to kill another one. And if any one of y'all in here can stop that, you just prevented yourself from getting killed. Yours from getting killed. And the weirdest thing about it, because many of y'all might not have been there, I've been there, is once we get in themselves, we start to realize it. But it's too late. We got 35 years with the new, um, non parolable offense, the, the um, war on drugs, they don't no longer give parole for violent offenses. So if you get 30 years, you're gonna do 28. Mm. 28 years. Well, I was fortunate again. And I think Mickey Watley went up and said something, I ain't gonna lie. I think he went and talked to Judge Victor Rawls. And this was all in my transcript. This is after the trial. When the judge asked me if I had anything to say, and Lord, I got up there to talk. The legs were shaking because I knew how much time I was getting ready to get. But I realized that what I was faced with was a lie. And the same thing I'm standing before you today talking about is what I said in court. Your Honor, they told me not to snitch. But you see how many people came in here today and pointed the thing at me, Your Honor. And Judge Victor Wall said, yes, I understand, but I can't over, this is all in my transcript. I normally bring it with me. He said, I can't overlook what you did. I have to send you for accordingly to your crime. 30 years. No, I said, Lord, how you think I need 30 years to straighten up? 30? No, y'all, not 30. Not 30. Not, 30. not for them telling on me and, and they got the bill running. I had a public defender. She didn't do much for me, but she was fast. But I was getting ready to get 30 years? And all I broke down, but Victor Rawls said to me, this is all in my transcript. You can go online and look it up. You were the only person in all the years, I forget how many years he told me he was on the bench, that ever came up here and talked about snitching. And because of that, I'm going to suspend your 30 years and give you five. Mm. And I looked at that judge, and all I could do, because I'm going to prison now, is smile. <laughs> but what I did after that, I smiled at him, I'm not going to lie, I smiled. I turned around and looked at my mama, and I remember that old saying, boy, you got a praying grandmama. <laughs> As a result of that, I advocate that if any one of y'all believes snitching is wrong, you're wrong. Because if someone kills somebody out here in this community, and you let them go, all you've done is boost their ego. Now you're telling them, I can do it again. You let your video prove it. And we can't do that no more. We have to stop. We cannot allow our children to continuously die by our children. If you leave your gun home, and I leave my gun home, we both going home. And that's more important. There's no way you can sit here and say, because two police officers, y'all know the story, did what they did, that that means all police officers back. Because I'm going to call you a liar. I know a man named Mickey Watley. And he was a good cop. Just like Chief Mullins had the opportunity to meet this dude who's adamant about getting me in there when he got these guys to talk to. No, I want to talk to you, sir. Even at one point, he told me I don't want to talk to Pastor Dixon. I want to talk to you. Why? Because you can relate to these children out here. That's how I got on this panel. I don't have nothing to say about all the things y'all talking about what they said. No. <laughs> no. I'm talking about the snitch. I'm talking about that lie that we've heard for so long that got even mamas. You know that boy ain't got no job. And he coming in with the $300 pieces on. You know that boy ain't got no job. And he got a ride out in the back door with 26 pieces of in your driveway. <laughs> Oh, he ain't got no job, but you turn your head because every month he slides you that $200 for life bills and you act like you ain't know what he's doing. You know what he's doing. You know what he's doing. You know what he's doing. But then no sooner to scream because what it says, what I learned was you live by the sword. Hey, can I say this right quick? Don't get mad at me.